We're now going to look at the H infinity state feedback problem. Now here I'm just giving you the basic results of, of all of this. Um, there's obviously quite a bit that is involved in the proof and the derivation of these things. Um, I'm not going into the depth of that or really what all of this fully means, but I want you to understand that we can actually design uh, to uh, satisfy H infinity type constraint. So now we're going to be given this system x dot is equal to ax plus bu, here's our input, plus gw, so there's our disturbance. So now we have a control input that we're going to apply to this system. And now our output z is going to be given by hx, not just h, not just hx, but hx and u. So we not only want to keep h times x small, but we also want to keep u small. And now we're seeking a control law, u is equal to k times x such that the system is stable and has h infinity norm less than gamma. So when we apply this state feedback control law, this is the, now the system that we get. And so in our previous bounded real lemma, this would be our A matrix, our G matrix, this would be our overall H matrix. Okay, and so we would have that. And so in order, we've seen what's required by the bounded real lemma for this to have h infinity norm less, to, less than gamma, and that is it needs to satisfy an inequality like this. Okay, needs to satisfy an inequality. So this is our A matrix. Here is our H matrix transpose H, so I get these two terms, and then I have this extra term, this quadratic term from the in P. I'm going to take this quantity, I'm going to subtract and add this quantity, P, B, B transpose P. It's like, why am I doing this? Well, because I know, I know where this is leading, so that's why I'm doing it. So I'm going to add and subtract this, and when I do that, I can go through and show that all of this stuff simplifies down to all of this stuff. So, so notice that this part right here is like what we had for the bounded real lemma, but now we have this extra term here involving B with a different sign. And the K terms that we had in here. So we didn't know what, cho what to choose for a state feedback gain, but I can take all of the K terms. So I have a K term here, K term here, K term here, and I can go through and show that all those three terms together with one of these guys can factor into this quantity. And so, if we ch this kind of tells us what to choose for k. It's, we choose k to make this guy equal zero. So when we do that, then we have another algebraic Riccati equation. So this gives us a, a state feedback gain to choose. And so this is the algebraic Riccati equation we would work with. So basically, it's this equation with this guy equal to zero. And now our Hamiltonian matrix becomes this. And so notice we have now um, this extra term in here that arises in our Hamiltonian matrix. So here's the state feedback problem. The theorem says there exists a state feedback law such that the closed loop system has H infinity norm less than gamma if and only if there is a stabilizing solution, P positive semi-definite, to this algebraic Riccati equation, in which case we have this state feedback gain, k is equal to minus b transpose p. So that is the state feedback solution for the H infinity problem. We've seen that there's a there's a frequency domain interpretation with all of this, and 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 so we we have that. Okay. Um, we can also look at this in terms of what's called a differential game. Ooh, games. Yeah, sounds like fun. Well, actually, it's uh, it's fun for mathematicians. It's probably not that much fun for, you know, your average Joe. But it's not that kind of a game. But this is a game problem. And the game problem says, given this differential equation, we consider this cost function. So notice this cost function involves x, u, and w. So by cost, we think we think of cost as keep something keeping something small with respect to it. 
So notice that in this system, in this situation, we have two inputs. We have a U input and a W input. As far as the cost is concerned, U is going to try to minimize this function, and W is going to try to maximize this function, subject to both signals being a finite energy. Well, we can think of finite energy for starters, we can also we also saw that it can work for RMS signals and and so forth. But uh, in terms of this problem, we're going to look at finite energy because if we look at what what's going on here, for example, the integral from zero to infinity u transpose u that's the energy in u, okay, and so forth. So each of these is actually an energy quantity. So if w is trying to maximize, notice that in the sign here is minus so if w tries to be too large then that's going to make this guy whole thing small so what w needs to do is it needs to wisely choose its values so that it doesn't necessarily have to be big but it makes this guy big and u is going you know if u gets large then obviously this whole thing is large so u needs to stay small as well and make this guy small so you have two things going on, and that's the differential game. So you have two players. One is trying to make this quantity large. The other is trying to make this quantity small. It turns out this differential game has what is called a Nash equilibrium. Incidentally, the, this is named after the, uh, the Nash. That is the, uh, one of the main characters in the movie A Beautiful Mind. Um, so he developed this, this Nash equilibrium for a differential gain. So that's what actually he was solving for back in that movie, in case you're wondering what it is he was trying to solve for. And the equilibrium involves both players employing a feedback strategy. U is equal to K times X. W is equal to KD times X. KD we've already seen given by this expression. K we've already seen given by this expression. They're both going to try applying um, feedback strategies. And P, the P that appears in both of these guys, is a solution of the algebraic Riccati equation. Okay. And so, so in this problem, we can think of there being a best control or an optimal control and a worst disturbance. Okay. And so this notion of a worst disturbance is important, and it's necessary for us to understand how to work with the output feedback problem. So understanding that this all comes from a um, differential gain actually helps us with that problem. So in terms of computing the solution, the solution is given in terms of an algebraic Riccati equation. The solution can be uh, computed using eigenspaces of the Hamiltonian matrix. Uh, or we could also use Riccati equation solvers. So one of the things that's, that's tricky about this in terms of Riccati equation solvers uh, is that this Hamiltonian matrix, because of the fact, the fact the way it is, this term is neither positive definite in general or negative definite, or uh, it's not positive semi-definite or negative semi-definite. And as a result, um, you may or may not get solutions for various values of gamma. Okay, and so we have that situation arising. So this is the uh, state, feed, state feedback control problem for the H-infinity problem.